Welcome to the Hydraulic Press channel. Today we are going to crush and explode ball bearings underwater. And I think we are going to start with the whole bearing. And after that, we are going to do just the balls from the bearing. But uh, let's go first with this. And if you haven't seen this before, they are hardened steel. They are extremely dangerous to crush. And you should never put anything that is hardened inside of your hydraulic press. And now we have the hardened <laughs> bearing. And also the tools are hardened steel. So this is extremely dangerous. And bearings are going to explode. And it's really interesting to see how far will the shrapnel fly under the water. Because uh, this is a bit similar than shooting gun under water. Especially the, just the balls themselves. They are super strong and some of the smallest shrapnel travels roughly one kilometer per second. So that's like rifle bullet speed territory here under water. So really interesting to see. I'm, I'm super hyped up about this idea. And I have my high speed camera running. I think it was around 7000 frames per second. So we are going to clearly see what's going to happen. That's about it. Let's start with this one. Okay. That wasn't super hard. And uh, I think we can do second crush the uh, inner ring. This is harder than the outer ring. So I'm going to take the uh, ball assembly away and then just crush these next. But before that, let's have a look on the high speed. I think we didn't have any super fast shrapnel on this. It's small on the balls. Okay, there is the action. No, there is not super much drama. There is some cavitation bubbles. Those are interesting. I think we are going to see more of them now when we cross the uh, harder ring. Okay, we are ready to go. And it's hard to decide, should I go like this or like this? This way it's much harder, but uh, it's less likely to have good shrapnel. I think we are going to go this. I'm not sure do we have even enough power, but let's use the full power. And if it doesn't explode, then we are going to turn it around. Okay, didn't explode, that was 40 tons. So I'm going to flip on its side. Okay, that was surprisingly weak. Okay, there isn't, isn't much happening. You can again clearly see how it vibrates when it goes. That's really interesting, the like first half a second. And what's going to happen for the uh, last part? Pochoing. It's funny, it sounded like it went in one go, but as you can see here, it takes quite a long time. Okay, now we have the hardened steel pole there. I think it's going to be something like 30 or 35 tons. So it should be about maximum that we can do with this machine. Okay, that was much more. That, I, I think that was good. That was good. Okay, can't, can't wait for the high speed. I'm really pleased on the sound. This might be something really special here. That's super, super weird. There is so much like cavitation bubbles that you can't really see what happens to the ball itself. Okay, you can see it. It's weird. If you look at like frame by frame, the whole area between the tools gets filled with like small bubbles on this frame. 
That's really interesting. I think I have to try it again with a bit different high speed camera settings. I'm going to add some gain and more frame rate. I have a bit problems on focusing such a small area with these lenses. But if I increase the speed and lower the resolution, we can get rid of the like areas here on the sides and stuff where really nothing happens. And I also bring the lights closer to get more light. So short technical break and then we are going to see it is even better what happened here. Okay, now I'm really pleased with the setup. The high speed camera frame is as wide as the tools are and the picture looks great and we have over 11,000 frames per second. So I can't wait to see those bubbles with this setup. So here we go. Yes, that was loud. And let's have a look at the high speed. Yeah, it's super fast thing still, even at this speed. Okay, I have to, we have to go like frame by frame. It's, it's, it's really hard to say anything. Okay, here is the, uh, maybe the first frame. Hey, I'm not actually sure. Those are not bubbles coming from like nothing. That's are the really fast things that I were talking about. They are not moving anymore on this frame. They fly up to that point and then they stop. So they penetrate maybe one inch of water and then they are, have lost all of their energy. But they sure go fast that first inch. And how after that, then we have the bubbles and they are out of the focus already because this is so close. Yeah, but that's super interesting. Okay, and then uh, last thing, if we have enough power to crush this large socket, and this should make a good amount of cavitation bubbles if it goes. Okay, it doesn't go. Okay, that was pretty good. And let's have a look on the high speed. Yeah, hey, that's super weird. Super weird. The like bubble goes around the socket. I thought that it's going to be like everywhere, but it seems that the low pressure regions are for some reason around the items. Or then it might be also that uh, like bubbles need some kind of surface or like features to form around. It's easier for them to be formed touching something than just like on the butter around the action. It's bit, probably a bit something like, like Coca-Cola and Mentos. The socket is the Mentos and the explosion is the Coca-Cola. Yeah, but I think this was super interesting video. Uh, I think I have to come up with some idea just to make cavitation bubbles and try to film them with different techniques. I think that's going to be on the Beyond the Press channel. But yeah, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.